Everybody, it's Tyler here at the World Championships, checking in team number 4613, Hall of Fame. Barker Redbacks uh, come in, two blue banners this year for Barker, and an absolutely phenomenal machine as they go through. Take a look what Barker has to offer. Uh, earlier on championships, cycling 14 game pieces and looking awesome on the field. I love the compactness that Barker brings on it. When they first came out of the robot, uh, I couldn't believe what their dimensions were, and I know they made a couple modifications, but of course we talk about custom swerve. What's well, gone to their intake, their arm, their cone uh, as well too, and cube. Let's find out more about Barker Redbacks coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Andy Marcus Parts and Products designed specifically for First Through Box competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Andy Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit andymark.com for all your educational robotics needs. Tim, let's start out on this robot talking about your uh, cone intake. Talk to me about uh, the overall packaging as you're going through and just how it uh, functions and operates as well. Yeah, so for the cone intake, we decided on a double roller design. Um, we split the cone and cube intake, so this can be as compact and small um, as we wanted it. We did a lot of prototyping, but found that using flex wheels on a relatively small um, sized intake was the best that we could do in terms of placing the game pieces and holding them throughout the match. Um, in terms of how we attach the cone intake to other subsystems, we've got the carbon fiber tube from the arm. Um, and the best way to attach to carbon fiber is to clamp it. So what we've done here is we've got a clamp, uh, and then we've also clamped the polycarb, because polycarb is also um, very, uh, holds its force very well under clamping force. Uh, we're running a 775 Pro. Um, we found this to be, we were earlier running a bag motor, but that was um, not strong enough. Um, so this allows us to shoot it a bit harder and to intake it more consistently. And for your team strategy wise, uh, are you mostly going to the stations or can you do some floor pickup too? Um, we prototyped with some floor pickup with this arm, but uh, we decided that that wasn't really helpful to us uh, because it increased our cycle uh, time and the double substation was really fast, uh, especially with the implementation of these skis on the bottom. Um, they mean that even if we're going fast and we have slightly different arm positions, it can whack the double substation and drive up it, intaking it always at the same spot. Um, the last thing that I'll talk about is just the lack of a wrist. We've just done a lot of prototyping with the angle uh, and ended up deciding that we didn't need a wrist um, for this to function well. Um, and this has worked really well for us and has been very reliable and consistent. Let's keep moving on as we kind of follow this pathing into your arm. I love the carbon fiber structure that's gone into that. Uh, so talk to me more about uh, how your degree of freedom is working on this as well too and the general packaging for it as well. Um, yeah, so this carbon fiber arm here, um, this is actually our third version of the arm. Each regional we've been to, we've shortened the arm by a considerable amount um, to just be increase cycle times and increase efficiency and also to lower our center of gravity. Um, so the carbon fiber tubes are, of course, really light. And to further amplify that effect, these pulleys here, we've milled out the inside, we've pocketed the inside using our CNC router, um, which also really helps for our center of gravity. When you're looking at it from uh, scoring at the different areas, how does kind of that, uh, your positional on that, I know we'll be kind of going through main positional control, but like you talked about COG on it. So when you're going up, like this is not extending out any further, right? You're actually, this is the full position for the packaging on that? So yeah, it goes out to here for the mid position and that's the furthest that we go. We've decided to completely cut out the high position just because we're faster. We can get an extra two or three cycles out of just going to the mid and low. So and you've been big... doing it here at Champs too, right? That's yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. really cool thing. You know, it's one thing to say it, but I think you're really proving on the field at Champs too, like how valuable something like that uh, can be. Can we see it in general? Can you show us just what uh, those couple positions look like too? Yeah, so when we stow, we stow all the way inside the frame. And then this is our human player position. We also have a second position that is like slightly higher in case it goes wrong, but we never had to use that because of our absolute encoders on the arm. And then it scores in mid, and that's our low drop-off position. I think one of the other cool things you're doing is your cube shooter on your robot as well, so I'd love to hear more about uh, 
you know, coming up with it. You were one of the earlier teams I saw do cube shooting uh, out there, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, so just talk to me about uh, how, obviously it's been working out well for you, but like, have there been any changes throughout the season on how you've approached your cube shooter? Yeah, so um, we actually started not with a cube shooter at the start of the season. We tried out catapults, different types of pneumatic claws, and like all sorts of different like intakes, outtakes. But once we like progress through the season, we found that a shooter probably would be faster and it would be more reliable for the three different stages, so hybrid, um, mid and high nodes as well. Um, it also meant that it would be able to shoot faster from a larger distance, which is really helpful for our autonomous. Um, I think, can we shoot it out? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that's how it works. And so what's happening here is um, we have this limit switch here, which is spring-loaded, and so it pretty much makes sure that when the cube is intaked into the cube shooter, um, the intake sort of doesn't vigorously spin as it does when it's trying to intake. It does a slow spin like this, just so that um, the compression of the ball, when it hits here, like if it does, then it doesn't sort of bounce out because of the compression. Um, yeah, so I think that's why we had the like wheels moving slowly. We found that that was mainly an issue um, throughout our regionals. Um, it was quite funny. It's like when our robot was moving with the cube shooter up, then the cube was sort of like bouncing up and down because it was sort of like getting compressed and then it would sort of like, yeah, it would sort of like shoot out um, because the wheels weren't spinning so it didn't have enough um, friction to keep it in. Something I want to ask you uh, from your uh, your shooter. You said that you know you're able to shoot from a little bit further out. So where is further out for Barker? Where do you like to typically shoot from then? Uh, yeah. So I think in autonomous, I think we have one autonomous where we shoot on the ramp. So then it pretty much decreases our autonomous time while still being able to shoot and park at the same time. Very cool. Let's wrap up on this robot. You're doing some custom swerve uh, on your robot as well this year, so I'd love to hear more about that. And then uh, I know you did make your base a little bit uh, bigger for championships as well, too. Talk to me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so we originally had a two-motor swerve, the Mark IV I L3, and so most of the parts here are the same, but we only changed these two gears here, and we added an extra motor. And so what this does, it decreases our acceleration time and increases our max speed from 5.1 meters per second to 5.9 but adding the extra motor added about one inch in total in the frame perimeter so yeah and then also you can see here we mount our battery from the bottom because center of gravity was very important this season because we'll be traveling very fast and we don't want to tip over so mounting the battery at the bottom decreases that center of gravity and also mounting the, the Falcon modules below the plate also decreases the center of gravity well, Barker Redback's phenomenal season this year. Um, you're on, what, your fifth event now here at Championships as well, too. Uh, so, very well-seasoned team. Uh, so, congratulations on a great year. But, of course, we can't wait to see how you do here at Champs. So, good luck the rest of the way. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first team experience and offers high quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.